Good morning. We are in Ushuaia, Argentina. Yeah, we are in the southernmost city in the whole world. So this place is known as the end of the world, which is really cool. We're so excited. There's so many things to do here and yeah. we have a jam-packed couple of days coming up. First, we're going to get on a boat, see some more animals. And then this afternoon, we get to go and walk with the penguins. We're so excited. It's like the main reason that we decided to come here. Um, and then we're going to do more exploring tomorrow. So we really got two days to explore Ushuaia and we are going to bring you along for it. So we've picked up our tickets and Nicole has found out that our name of a boat was what? Francesca the Third. It's like a big catamaran. You can also do this on a yacht with a small number of people, but it actually takes a bit longer and we don't have enough time today. So, the shorter one it is. We need more time for those penguins. Penguins! Oh my god guys, we have our first penguin sighting. <laughs> there it is. It's a beautiful morning. It's supposed to be raining today. So we brought all our rain gear and warm clothes, but so far, it's so sunny. I think it's gonna be a good boat ride. This is it, Francesco the Third. I won't lie, I do wish we were getting on a ship to Antarctica, but they are ridiculously expensive and they do not fit a backpacker budget, which is a shame that one day. Super worth it. It's about a three hour tour. If you are on a tight budget and want to do something really, really cool while in Ushuaia and like see the animals, this is the tour. Okay, we've stopped for lunch. We are obviously off the boat. We found a little restaurant just right near the port. And I have got myself some gnocchi. So if you missed our Buenos Aires video, there is a really significant Italian influence here in Argentina. So they do pasta like really, really, really well here, which is excellent for me because I love my pasta. So I've got gnocchi, which is potato based for anyone who's not too familiar with gnocchi. And it looks amazing. I actually should put some Parmesan on here. Oh, man. Oh, so I got the mix sauce which is a tomato and cream mix. That is the way to go with pasta sauce here. Oh my God, this is so good. So good. Okay, excellent choice in between tours. 
All right, so being in Ushuaia, of course I had to get a little bit of the local fish. And today I got some cod with some Roquefort cheese. Now, I'd love to tell you more about it, but there's gonna be a lot in this vlog. We're gonna save it actually for our upcoming Argentinian food vlog where we talk about food all across Argentina. So definitely watch out for that one. We are on our second tour of the day. Yeah. We hopped on a bus real fast after lunch. We're now at the port, about to get on the boat to go see the penguins. We stopped at a museum on the way. It was like a marine museum. It was actually so cool. So cool. Completely blew our minds. Yeah. Like, learned a lot about marine life yeah. and orcas and dolphins, yeah. penguins. Lots stuff. of skeletons. And then we went into the bone house. Which That's is where so they cool. clean off the bones for the yeah. uh, animals inside the museum. And yeah. it was smelt so. Oh, there yeah. are bones of sea life. <laughs> but it was really cool. I think we could have spent all day in there. But, but now, penguins. we're finally got about to get on the boat to the island nearby that has all the penguins. I'm so excited. So we're pumped. We're gonna go for a little walk. For sure. There's loads of penguins. Look, it's like a couple. And I think that penguins make for life, aren't they? That's cool. One of those penguins looks like he's down on his luck. <laughs> he looks like he's wearing a scarf. He does look like he's wearing a scarf. They're molting, I guess. I guess they only molt for like, depending on the breed of penguin, like five to ten days per year. But it's today! I think we could just stand out here and watch the penguins all day. There's all sorts of things happening. Some are just chilling, some are sleeping, some are walking around, some are running around, some are swimming, some are getting out of the water. They're so beautiful to watch. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but like, they all look so funny. There's just something comedic about the penguin. Just their mannerisms, the way they run and walk. Yeah, or just probably. sit still. <laughs> but they're adorable. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the like, main, like the biggest nesting area. So there's holes everywhere. We've been told not to fall in. Part of love. Hang with me. Hello. You checking me out? Hello. I just I don't know where I'm going to your burrows. How do you get past them? Just go. But I don't. I don't want to hurt him or him to get freaked out. Attack me. No. <laughs> Danger penguins, there should be a sign. Water. That's super cute. Those penguins are just playing around. That's why we asked the guide what they're doing, why they're jumping out of the water, and it's just hopping around for fun. Just hanging out, not even trying to eat, just chilling. That's very cool. I think that the guy just told us there are 8,000 penguins here. 8,000? 8,000 penguins on this little island. Oh cool. And I guess at this island, biologists believe that it's just sort of really well made for them. There's no predators here for the eggs, well, except for birds, um, or the penguins, of course. And then uh, the ground's really soft for the burrows. So, perfect place to be a penguin. I think it costs 12,500 pesos each to come, plus 2,500 pesos 
for like a national park fee. Um, so it's a pretty pricey day to be here, but this is really, really cool. Not all the companies allow you to come like on and like like on the island and walk around here. A lot of them just bring boats by and they can just like take a look. Very cool to come here though. So here's an example of a penguin tour where you can see the penguins, but you don't actually walk on the island. So just right behind me here. We have to leave the island. We're here for what? I'd say 40 minutes. Yeah. 40 minutes on the tour, yeah. Bye buddies. See you probably never. Good morning everyone. Nicole and I are still dreaming over those penguins yesterday. That was awesome. Yeah, we had a really awesome time with them and we ended up meeting some awesome people while we were there. So They were great. We had some pizza and some drinks with them. They're also making a travel vlog on Ushuaia and things to do here. So go and check them out. Give them some love if you want to check out some more content on Argentina and specifically Ushuaia. But today we're at the train station. Yeah, we are doing the end of the world train ride. So we'll bring you along to experience this on this chilly, foggy, rainy day. Okay, I think that's our train. So really quickly, uh, the cost of tickets right now in March 2022 um, are 4,900 pesos per person if you are a foreigner, plus the national park fee for Tierra del Fuego National Park of 22,500 pesos. It is not cheap to come and ride this train right now, guys. But it's the last one at the end of the world, so we have to go at least try it. We're gonna see. We'll see if it's worth it. We're a little skeptical, so. What I'll also add to Nicole's pricing is that that was the price for the tourist class of the train. There are other classes, I think, like for premium and first class and things like that. But for us, we just kind of got the lowest, most economic tourist class. Because we're really not sure it's going to be worth it yeah. at all. <laughs> I think you get like a little bit of extra food in the yeah, premium yeah, yeah. class, like alforés and a drink and stuff like that. Yeah. In a tourist class, you just get the views. So our line is literally moving, but Nicole and I love our coffee, so I'm gonna take a risk here and try to get a little bit of coffee. It's about 300 pesos each for coffee and milk. I think it's gonna be totally worth it. Potentially even worth maybe missing this line, but we'll see. Yes, yes, thank you. This is so cute. I think it's the setting. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so itty bitty. It is pretty nice. Yes, yes. So far is that Ushuaia was originally a penal colony and the train was actually made by the prisoners that lived here. They would ride the railway out into what is now Tierra del Fuego National Park and cut down a bunch of trees and then they would use the trees to build the jail, kind of build things in the town as well as heat the town. So the railway was really important. The other thing to know about the jail is that it was known to be incredibly harsh down here at the end of the world. Um, really harsh conditions, the guards are really harsh so the prisoners were not treated well. And it was closed I think in 1947. Okay, it's been a grand total of five minutes on the train, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I guess we all get off and uh, take some nice photos at this train station. Yeah, you take like a quick break. I think there's actually a small little waterfall up at a spot nearby, I think. The train has also been going so slow. Because I keep thinking that we could probably just walk faster than the train, because we're supposed to go seven kilometers in 45 minutes. It's not even 10 kilometers an hour. Like It's uh, so like, slow. It's a light jog, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a very chill ride. So we've stopped here to go out for a little hike to see a waterfall and uh, yeah, it's yeah, just a little underwhelming compared to the Guazu Falls that we were at not too long ago. <laughs> that is a waterfall. It's an expensive nap, I think, for most people. That's true, I did actually fall asleep yeah. for a little bit of it. You did, and he was not alone. Lots of folks around me were sleeping. Honestly, like, it's just so expensive. Like, 4,900 pesos per person right yeah. now. Plus, you have to pay the national park fee to come in here. Honestly, I don't think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, 
the I think what, one of the reasons a lot of people take it is because they take the train in and then they hike around Tierra del Fuego. We would have done that today, but it's very rainy and misty and very cold. Yes, yeah, so we're right now we're in Tierra del Fuego National Park, yes. and that's what we paid the park fees for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good starting point for a lot of hikes. The big reason that people come here, and this is one of the things we're about to go do, is that the post office at the end of the world is here. So it is definitely a convenient place. Like, get the train, get to the post office, go for a hike around Tierra del Fuego National Park. Um, but it's really overpriced as a couple like Miko and I. I'm gonna go with Don't not worth so. it right now. Okay, uh, we've got our rain gear on because it's a little bit rainy, but we found what we think is yeah. the path that will head towards the post office. So we made it to the end of the trail and it looks yeah. like we're here at the <laughs> end of the world post office. I legitimately have postcards I've been trying to mail for weeks. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty cool place to send a letter from. So if you come to the post office and you don't have any postcards or stamps, you can get that all here and then write your own letter and then there's a person here that will stamp it all for you and go into wherever it needs to go. I think it's supposed to take two to four weeks to get there, I think. You can also get your passport stamped here. Uh, and it does look like it's really cool. I think it's about 500 pesos to do it. Um, it takes up a whole page of your passport and we just don't have that much room. But it is something you can do if you government your passport. Gracias. Unreal. Look at that. South Pole is less than 4,000 kilometers away. Antarctica, 1,200 kilometers. Wow, hey. Wow. Okay, so at the end of the uh, post office is a little dock, and it's super cute. Yeah. I gotta say, that post office was super cool. It I, was really cute. I think I enjoyed the few minutes of being in there and looking yeah. around, then I did the entire train ride. <laughs> <laughs> I think you fell asleep on the train. There were beautiful views on the train. I fell asleep for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, that water looks cold. Lunch. <laughs> We've got ourselves a great lunch spot, but on top of the sandwiches, we also picked up, or I picked up, some Beagle Red Ale, which I think is like the local beer here in Ushuaia. A beer at the end of the world, from the end of the world. Cheers. Cheers. Pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah? I've heard there's a bit of a craft beer like market here mm. in Ushuaia, and uh, Beagle is one of, the, one of their top craft beers, so. Cool. All right, this lunch is great. This view is awesome. We're gonna wrap it up because uh, I think we need to catch our train, so. Back into the city again. We hope you've enjoyed coming around and checking out Shreya with us. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what was the problem? It's so bright. Yeah, you could just kind of catch like the side of us. There we go. You sure? Let's cover the sun with my head. Your big, big head? Yeah. <laughs> Some animals and also get a nice little taste of the uh, landscape around here. Taste the landscape, baby. Taste, it. Taste the landscape.